on demand English and in today's video we're going to talk about food food glorious food as they say in Oliver the challenge for many learners of English is to distinguish whether food is countable or uncountable in American English that's count and non-count it means the same thing so in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about that so in general the easiest way to think about this is if you think about things that are sold in either food or drink format. Typically, when something is a liquid, it is uncountable. Think of water, coffee, tea, beer, wine. All of these things are referred to in the uncountable format, and that's because you almost certainly could not count the amount of drops of liquid that go into it to make it so it's almost by its very nature it's abstract and it's while the amount may be countable in liters milliliters pints gallons quarts whatever you might think the actual liquid itself is uncountable so we can say a bottle of beer a glass of wine a cup of tea but we cannot actually count the liquids themselves when it comes to food, typically we can. If you think of an egg, one egg, two eggs, eggs are sold by the dozen, usually. Um, we can also get things like onions, peppers, tomatoes, but not all food is countable. For example, bread. Even though it's possible to count the amount of slices on a loaf of bread, bread itself is uncountable because it's a very abstract nature. For example, you could have a bun, a roll, a croissant, a ciabatta, a pita, not to mention all the various other forms and sizes of them. The very variety of bread is why it's uncountable here. And it's the same for rice. You, know, you could, in theory, count the number of grains of rice in a packet of rice or a box of rice, a, who would want to, and B, why would you? Um, there are far more interesting and better things to do with our time than to simply count the amount of grains of rice in a box. So instead, we look at different varieties, a box of rice, a bowl of rice, a plate of rice. We have white rice, brown rice, jasmine rice, basmati rice, and many others besides. Then we come to some which are quite complicated and kind of weird at the same time. For example, uh, we can have banana and apple, they're plural. We can have pears and mangoes and peaches and apricots. But grapes is almost always used in the plural form. Why? Because people don't tend to buy one grape at a time. They tend to buy them in bunches, a bunch of grapes. On that bunch, usually there's more than one grape, unless you are really trying to save the pennies and you only have enough money for one singular, solitary, lonely grape. That is why it is used in the plural form. The fact is that countable and uncountable for food takes a lot of practice. There are many, many different avenues, and I do think it's worthwhile taking some time to look at them, to practice, to kind of consider all of the different aspects and avenues pertaining to this. And if you do have any questions about food, countable and uncountable, I'm here to help. That's part of the service we provide here at English on Tap on Instagram, Skype, mr Thornton. here on the YouTube channel. Feel free to comment, subscribe and link below. As I said, I love questions and I'm more than happy to hear from you. So do feel free to let me know any questions you have. I've been Daniel from Learning On Demand English and I will see you